Do you want to help? Are you trying to help? You can choose. Which boots should I wear? Hmm? Those? The summer weights? Oh, the winters. It's Chelsea. It is Monday, November 16th, and right now I'm looking at the weather for Wednesday, November 18th, because I'm going to go fox hunting this day. And of course, it looks like it's going to be the coldest day of the week. Okay, so here I have my two sets of tall boots. They're both made by Ariat, but this is my summer weight pair, and this is my winter weight pair. So both sets of my boots are really dirty right now. Oh, Hamish. Guys, he's such a love. Look at him, just loves to be scratched. But he's right in the way of my camera. Buddy, what are you doing? Yes, you're so sweet. Okay, so back to boots. Look at those, super dusty. Those guys have been on the shelf since last winter. These are my summer weights. I've just ridden in these recently. Both are really dusty, covered in mud, and they need a good clean and a polish before either one can be seen out in the hunt field. So here I've got my black shoe polish. I've got a toothbrush for doing the soles and in the little stitching and the laces and the finer cleaning details. I have a white old t-shirt and just another old t-shirt. And here is my lighter. I'll show you what I will do with that here in a minute. So because I've been in the army for 13 years, I have shined a lot of shoes and a lot of boots. So I have a system down that I like that works pretty well for me. Um, obviously I'm not going to be doing like an inspection worthy shine on my boots, but they have to look nice for the hunt field. It's considered polite, it's considered proper, and also the layer of shoe polish that I'm going to put on them also helps sort of protect the leather, it fills the pores in a little and help, uh, keeps the longevity of the boot. Look at that. Yuck. Definitely needs some TLC. So I take the not white, dirty, oh, yep, and guys, I should warn you, there's a lot of spit that's gonna happen in this video because I like to do the classic spit shine. And I will warn you that if you do a spit shine on shoes that are this dirty, you're gonna need a bottle of water because you're gonna go through a lot of spit. So if you don't like spit, uh, I'm sorry, you guys. As you can see, it's gonna happen a lot, but uh, just bear with me where you can fast forward through the whole shoe shining bit. And of course, as you can hear, my dogs are barking in the background. They're probably never quiet. They're definitely never not under your feet, but we love them dearly. So, okay, so like I said before, I take the non-white t-shirt and a lot of spit. See the, yep, I'm showing you the wear on the inside of my calf. And uh, you take it and you just use some spit and you're using that rag to primarily just clean off the outer surface layer of dust and grime and mud and anything that is on there. Um, definitely use old t-shirts or old rags that you don't care about because they are going to get filthy. They're basically going to get destroyed. Okay, so now that I've finished with the old t-shirt, I'm going to use some water and this handy dandy toothbrush to get in the crevice between the sole and the boot itself. I'm going to get into the zipper and any of the little fine stitching, basically anywhere. I'm not really going to put a lot of polish, but that needs to get scrubbed out. I do particularly like this toothbrush because it has the little tongue scraper rubber backing so that I can use that on any of the spots that might have a little bit more tougher mud on the sole or just need a little bit more of an abrasive surface to get rid of any grime. Okay, I've got everything wiped down. It's time for some polish. I usually like the black Kiwi brand, but I was out and so I ran to the dollar store and grabbed this. Now this is where my white t-shirt comes into play. I use it so I can see how much polish is on the shirt. Now I take two fingers, wrap the t-shirt around, give the back a twist, 
so that it stays taut on your fingers and that's gonna make a really great surface to pick up this polish and always make sure your polish is wet. It needs to stay moist. Like again, I like the white t-shirt so I can see how much polish is still on my rag and see where it's coming off on the shoe. All right, here we go. So I pretty much am just trying to liberally apply this. It um, doesn't really matter if you just sort of wipe it on, do a circular motion at this point. You're just really trying to get a, a nice thin layer of polish onto the boot. Again, you're just wanting to fill in the pores because it is leather, it's animal hide, and it does have a very porous surface. And so by filling it in with some shoe polish, it's going to help sort of seal that leather. It's going to help it uh, buff up and shine up a little bit nicer, and it's just really good for your boots. As I said before, make sure your polish stays wet, and you'll see me constantly picking up more polish. Um, you don't necessarily want to overload your boot on polish. However, you do not want to be rubbing with a dry cloth or a cloth that doesn't have a lot of shoe polish at any time, because then you're no longer applying it and you're just kind of pushing around what you already had. Uh, this will take time to sort of get the feel of how much polish you need, where you need to apply it, how it's going into the boot, etc. But for now, it just, like I said, it just takes practice and doing it over and over and over again. And if we were all living in a perfect world and we were the best equestrians, we would really put uh, a nice coat of polish on our boots after every ride or you know every few rides as it is needed but let's face it I think I maybe only do the entire boot all the way up the barrels but I usually only do a full shine on the entire boot probably two or three times a season but when I want the toe boxes to be super shiny or the foot part to be super shiny I will do those every few rides um, because the minute that you wear your boots out you will lose that mirror shine finish it's inevitable you're going through grass you're getting on a horse um, you can wipe them down as you go but if you really want that glassy mirror shine finish you're gonna have to redo the shine finish on your boot Okay guys, these are my winter boots, so I usually wear them out fox hunting more than I do my summer weights because it's pretty cold by the time I need them. So I'm going to let you in on a little secret. I have shined these boots up before. So re-shining their toe boxes is a little bit easier because I have filled in the leather pores with a lot of polish in the past. I do that by applying it quite a few times and I also do it, you will see me use my breath, I will breathe hot air on it because that sort of um, opens up the pores to re receive the polish a little more and I will also use the lighter. Now I know I said you want to keep your polish wet and you don't want to use your lighter too much but here's the thing, when you use your lighter it sort of melts that wax polish into the pores of the boots, really gets it in there so it's becoming more of an even flat surface and then you are going to immediately take water or spit shine, spit right on top, and you're gonna keep working that in in small circles with your fingers into that toe box. That is how you really start to make a mirror shine is because you're making it a flat, glassy surface. But again, it's not gonna take me as long with this particular pair of boots because I have done that mirror shine finish on the toes in the past, and so it's gonna be a lot faster.
Okay, guys, here it comes. Here's the lighter. Now, please, if you are a youth rider, if you are younger, or you've never used a lighter before, please ask for parental help. I also do prefer these small Bic lighters. They're easier to hold up um, onto the boot and control for melting the polish in rather than those long, like, candle lighting lighters. However, I have used those in a pinch. Um, I've also used matches. It's not as effective, but hey, it does work. Um, I've never used a candle or like a tea light. That probably might actually work better and smell really good if you get like a vanilla scented one or something. But as you can see here, again, just working that polish in in slow circles, I lit it with the match not on fire, just enough to uh, warm it up and melt it in, and then I spit on it. Again, sorry for the spit, guys, but it is a spit shine job. And now, there we go again, making sure that that polish stays wet at all times. You don't want it to dry because then it will flake off, and that will flake off your nice, pretty mirror shine. Okay, so I've definitely been at polishing my boots for a while. Um, I've had to shed my outer layer because I am starting to warm up. It's not a crazy vigorous activity, but I am sitting in the sun so that you guys have better light for the video and I was starting to get really hot. So I did have to shed a layer and yep, there it is. I am seriously starting to run out of spit at this point. I am wondering where my water bottle is and the fact that I probably need to drink some water. But I am on to my summer weight boots. These are my summer weight boots. So we have finished the first pair. So we are at the halfway point. Ah, uh, here it is. Definitely need a water break. Running out of spit with all these boots to shine. Phew. And finally, I am finished. My fingers aren't too black with the shoe polish this time, which is pretty good. I have definitely turned them pretty darn black before, but it does wash off with some soap and water in a little bit of time. So now it's time to put all this stuff away and move on to the next step. All right guys, here, they're done. Now I did take a soft buffing cloth at, to finish clearing up the cloudiness on the toes of the boots. I just needed a softer cloth. But from the way they looked before to the way they look now, they're a little bit better. I will have to go back and reapply some polish and really shine up the rest of the shoe and the boot so that they look better overall. 
Okay, so I have a fox hunt on Wednesday that I'm getting ready for. I have already shined my two pairs of boots because I'm not sure which pair I'm going to wear. Um, but now I need to make sure that I have all of my other little bits and pieces um, packed away and ready to go because I have a really early morning that morning and I still have to be able to get my daughter ready for school. And so I'm preparing two days in advance and that way if I need to wash anything, I'll be good. And Cole has decided to come up with us. So last year for Christmas, my husband got me this bag. I don't know if you can see that. But I think it's from Dover. It opens up and lays flat. So it unzips. And I can hang up my show jacket and shirt inside. In this pouch, I apparently put my nice white stock tie. Let's take a look. This one's really nice. I got it from Horse Country. It's like one of the only things I can afford in there, but it's really nice quality. I love it. And so I try to keep it nice. So I want to make sure that's tucked in. This is, this is actually the compartment for the helmet. So I will end up uh, tucking my helmet in there when I do the packing portion. Yep. All my other little bits and bobs. So I'm gonna put my white sock tie in there. That's the one I'll probably wear. Uh, this is a Tattersall stock tie for cubbing. And this is just a pretty cool, funky, like blue and gold sock tie. Again, for cubbing. Um, I have my hairnet and an extra in there. Here's an extra white um, stock tie. Now this isn't the traditional um, fourfold and then tie stock tie. This is the um, fitted Shires one. As you can see, Shires, that you just wrap around your neck and then you put your um, plain gold stock tie pin through. And then I've repurposed a pill bottle because we get so many of them. So in here, I keep I keep extra bobby pins, not bobby pins, safety pins. Um, for pinning down the stock tie to the shirt. Um, I don't wear this stock tie hunting. I've had this since I was probably, I don't know, 12 years old. Um, it's even worn down and turning silver, but um, I used to wear this when I would show hunters um, back when you still wore like the rat catcher Velcro necktie and then you'd put the stock pin over top. But for fox hunting, it's, considered proper kit to just wear a plain gold pin. So I have that here and I have a backup somewhere. But all of that goes in here so that I don't lose it. So let me tuck it all back in. Um, this bag, obviously, I'll show you. This bag has um, a compartment for each boot. So one boot, two boot. I haven't decided whether I'm gonna tuck my boots in there. I probably will just so I won't leave them behind. I also just don't know which pair I'm gonna wear yet. Go ahead and flatten this back down because there's no helmet in it. But I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my white uh, fox hunting shirt and my vest and my jacket and make sure that they're good to go for this year. Okay, so here I've laid out my white fox hunting shirt. It is made by Shires again, and it is a thicker material than you'd want to wear in the summer, so it stays pretty warm. Sometimes I might layer underneath of it, but I was just checking it over to make sure that it didn't have any stains or anything. It looks like I washed it before I hung it up in my closet from last year, which is good of me. I don't always do that. Uh, here is my golden vest I got last year. It does have six buttons down the front. I was really excited to find this and be able to afford it. Um, someone brought it in on consignment at the Middleburg Tack Exchange. 
And we'll just check over the back, make sure that it's in decent condition. Yep. So the reason I was able to get it so cheap on consignment is it does have some wear and snag on the shoulder. It's so minimal though that uh, I was really excited to get this. And here is the jacket I will wear. It is, I believe, an RJ Classics. Um, it's not, yeah, oh yeah, RJ Classics. So it's not what you would consider like a traditional fox hunting jacket. It is black, um, which is what my hunt wanted. And uh, it does have the nice tailored uh, in waist. It is not wool. Um, I would love to own a Melton wool jacket, but I don't fox hunt enough yet. Uh, having a young kid at home to justify spending the money for that yet. Um, so in the meantime, oof, I'm gonna have to lint roll this. But overall, it actually looks pretty clean as well. I'm going to have to go find my brown gloves and make sure that they might be in with my helmet. So I'm going to pack these up in my bag and make sure that they are ready to go for Wednesday. Hey guys, it's Tuesday, the day before the fox hunt, and I'm getting excited and nervous, um, but I still have a lot to do to get ready. I've been spending most of the day inside doing house chores and playing with my daughter. Right now, I am making homemade hot chocolate. Boom. Because I'm going to try and convince my daughter to come to the farm with me because I still have to give my horse a bath and pack up the trailer with my tack and get gas in the trailer and hook the trailer up. I have a lot to do. And so it's usually easier if my daughter is willing to come along and help out. So hot chocolate usually, usually works pretty well. So I'm trying to make the best stuff and I have some giant marshmallows to put in. Yeah, so I'm hoping that this will be enough to convince her to come and help me out.
so based on the weather tomorrow, I decided to go with my winter boots. I think they came out looking pretty good. Okay, so now I'm just tucking them away into my bag, making sure that I have both my boots. It's kind of hard to do one-handed, but there we go. In here is my helmet. I do ride in a Charles Owen. Uh, and this helmet is fitted so that my hair can fit up underneath of it. This isn't my schooling helmet. Alright, I also went and found my brown gloves, making sure that, again, I have my hair nets, my pins, and my stock tie all in this pouch, and we are good to go there. So, walking down to the truck and the trailer, which are at the bottom of our driveway, and I've got my fleece pad and I've got all my nice garment bag that has my boots, my helmet, my jacket, my vest, everything in it. I did a double check inside. Wow, it's already getting really cold. You guys, you can tell it's cold. Look at my nose. It almost matches my hat. It's so red. crazy. It's six o'clock. It is pitch black. Ugh. So this is the trailer the night before. Saddle, half pad, two girths. Here's my lamb's wool fleece white pad because it's formal attire. I've got blue, both of Blue's bridles. I've got his uh, mechanical hackamore. I also have his bridle that has the bit on it. He's got a full hay nut. The only thing I didn't do tonight is I did not fill the water jug up only because it's probably going to freeze. So I figured I'll just fill it in the morning. Um, that way uh, it, it has less chance of freezing. And then when we get on the road tomorrow, I will take all this stuff out. So there's the trailer jack in case... Um, we get a flat tire. These are actually Mina's shipping boots. I will probably put them in the tack room. There's my first aid kit. It goes in the truck. And there's my uh, mobile mounting block because whenever you go fox hunting, there's never a mounting block to get on or rarely mounting block. So we have a folding one that fits really nicely in our trailer. All right, guys, I got it muscled up in there. So everything should stay nice and flat. Boots, helmet, gloves, everything is tucked away in there. All right, walking down to the truck finally. It's cold. Doesn't feel like it's that cold, but I'm glad I have layers on. Guys, I'm so lucky the closest horse in is blue. It's like he knows. Oh, he's a mess. Oh, I can see the mud on his face from here. Oh, look. Definitely got cold. There's ice. <laughs> oh, you're not too bad. You're fluffy. Okay, we are on our way. Um, it's 8 o'clock now, which is good because I still have to get there, get him off, tack him up. Uh, get myself straight, which means I got to put on my hairnet. Um, I have to tie my stock tie, which I am just awful at, and get myself ready to go. I have to make sure he's completely sound because he's being a little ouchy in his back end, which usually means it's cold and his hock arthritis is acting up. All of us can understand when it gets cold, our joints start to hurt. So, yeah, wish me luck. We should be off by nine. So my truck is full of stuff after we're done. Just sort of everything's just sort of thrown in there. 